This is the Sunday stream opening song because the other song is copyrighted. La 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 Oh look, here comes Dog Cat Fox! Hi, Sky! Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday stream. The stream I do on Sundays because Sunday is the day to stream on Sundays. Hope you're all doing well this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, I had uh, hoped to bring you a different kind of show today, but as it is, Murphy's Law kicked in and two of my uh, three scheduled guests for the first episode of Living on Borrowed Crime uh, had to uh, bow out, so I have postponed that for a date yet to be determined. I'm uh, trying to arrange with the uh, guests and perhaps others to find a day that works where I can try that out for the first time again. So there's that. Oh well, disappointing, but c'est la vie. But regardless, here we are with a new Sunday stream. And I've got my cup of water because it's too early to be drinking. And uh, it's not exactly a sunny day out right now, but it's comfy, and I appreciate comfy over uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is for conversations, which we might be having today. Don't know yet. We'll find out together. But before we get into that, who's joining me on this beautiful Sunday morning? Jaeger Pony, Mike R, Kiever Dam, uh, some Nemnyol Nation, Noah Asensio, uh, let's see, Mike Savage, and uh, who else is here? Uh, some Nemnyol Nation? Did I already say some Nemnyol Nation? I said it again. Tyrannus, Alexandrius, Invictus Soul, uh, well, Spoony the Rebel, The Magister, Tall Person, Pie Guy 07, and then Chat Jump because of course it did. Sarah Chapman, good morning, good morning, and Brett Eyed, X Bubba Hotep, Elliot Fox. Boy, I'm almost like I'm listing off all the uh, members of the Mickey Mouse Club. Cubby, Annette, and so on. I only remember Cubby and Annette. I'm sure there were others. I'm, I'm sure there was a Ralph in there somewhere or a George. I, I don't know. I used to watch the Disney Channel when I was a kid and they played the old, old, old reruns of the Mickey Mouse Club. That's how I know that. Also, back to the beach with Annette Funicello and, you know, Gilligan from Gilligan's Island and all those guys. Boy, I'm just taking down a trip down memory lane here, but the trip I'm not taking is to college, specifically law school, because that's where we're going today. We're going to law school to learn about something that I didn't know existed, or if I hadn't heard it existed, I've forgotten about it, thankfully. But that's apparently a diversity statement for admissions. Yes, apparently, and this is news to me and we'll, we'll learn together, uh, in order to apply for law school, you either have to, or perhaps are encouraged to, along with any other statement of your you know, own personal accomplishments and why you want to be a lawyer or something, also have to include a diversity statement. What is a diversity statement? What constitutes such? What is its utility? I don't know. But hopefully our speaker today will educate us all, because I'm curious. Uh, thank you, Kiever Dam. Today is Spoonie's birthday. What? Spoonie's birthday? How many spoons are you? Well, you don't have to tell me. Your, your, your age is your own. I, I suppose I'm thus obligated to, uh, to sing happy birthday to Spoonie. So uh, it's not the appropriate background music for it, so let me pause that briefly so it doesn't get in the way. But <clears throat> Spoonie... I am told by the uh, resident den mother of the scribe tribe that it's your birthday, and therefore I shall do this. Anna one, Anna two. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Happy birthday to Happy birthday, Spoonie. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm not sure my throat enjoyed that, but give my vocal cords a moment to recover. 
Uh, a couple more hellos, and then we will get into it. Let's see who else is here. Um, twisted, S S twisted step skipster. Hello, <laughs> uh, Ken Elliott, uh, Spud Gun, and uh, who else? Anybody else? Renovatio. Good morning, good morning. If I missed anybody or anybody lurking, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. But anyway, let's get into this. What we have here is uh, apparently, if I remember correctly, she is a uh, a consultant, a diversity consultant of some kind. But specifically, she's going to be educating us on one's diversity statement when applying, I think, specifically to law school. Anyway, this runs uh, just over 13 minutes. I have no idea what we're in for. But it's all, I, I do know one thing, it is all just a fixed camera on our speaker sitting on a couch. There's not very, not a lot of action going on. I might upload this later as a simple audio-only podcast, therefore. So, with that all being said, let's begin. Also, sorry, uh, please take a look at the top of the chat box for the GoFundMes, thankfully provided by Kievernam, to our friend Shady Grin, Angry Illinoisian, and his kitten. If you have a couple of bucks to spare, they, their loved ones, and their families could certainly use your help. Okay, let's go. Today, we're going to be talking about diversity statements. How? Okay, well, you guys hear that all right? Let me know in the chat real quick. You know, I, I don't take it for granted that all the uh, bells and whistles and buttons are working on any given broadcast. So if you hear that all right, let me know. Uh, Mr. Ticketrunk, good morning. Jamie Melquist, good morning. Uh, the Original Shroom, good morning. Uh, let's see. Sounds fine, says some emulation. Sounds good, says Mike R. Sounds good, says X Bubba Hotep. And all right. How do you even structure your diversity statement? What is a diversity statement? Should you be writing one? How do you structure one? What goes in it? How is this different from your personal statement? You have questions. I have answers. Excellent, because that is what I'm here to find out. I want answers to these questions because I didn't know such a thing existed until yesterday when I came across this video. So tell me, tell me, tell me true. Oh, all about law school admissions. S. Montgomery, admissions consulting, Princeton University, Harvard Law School. Oh boy, this sounds all professional and stuff. I hope this, uh, I'm going to mute the soundtrack just for a moment on the off chance that music is uh, copyrighted for some reason. I will unmute it when she comes back on the screen. Okay. There we go. For you who are new and don't know me, my name is Sydney Montgomery and I'm the founder of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting where we specialize in working with first generation and minority law school applicants. Today we are going to be focused on diversity statements, right? And how to structure them. And I really love diversity statements. I I, I, I bet you do, since you're a diversity consultant of the kind. Hmm. First generation students, at such minority students. Okay. I really, really do. I was so this doesn't apply to... See, again, I, I keep coming back to this first generation thing. Are you talking about like first generation American or first generation college student? Because I've heard it rendered in different ways. Like either a first generation student is the first one in their family to attend a four-year college of any sort, or a first-generation student is simply a first-generation American to end up attending college. I've heard both definitions. I'm going to assume she's talking about the second one, but I don't know. Talking with a student this past week and giving him lots of examples. If you haven't already downloaded our free essential guide to applying to law school, I Please haven't. do so. We also have mm -hmm. a specific free guide on diversity statements, although a lot okay. of that information is covered in our free guide. We okay. also have, and I'll talk a little bit at the end about this too, um, on our Kickstart essay plans, that like first tier, it's a $20 tier, it comes with all of our pre-recorded courses. That oh, you're, you're selling courses on essay plan. Oh, okay. It means on brainstorming your essays, there's one specifically on diversity statements, there's uh -huh. one on addenda, there's one on resumes, sure. there's one on asking for letters of recommendation. Uh, there's so many, many courses at this point, I think. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like a lot of them involve, like, you know, actual personal merit, skill, education, or networking. So that's why I'm really curious to know what goes into a diversity statement. I think there's like seven or eight, right? Like, there's so many, many courses at this point. You can actually uh -huh. just get it for 20 bucks. Oh, is, is that all? Just 20? Okay. That's it. One time. 20 bucks. 
Color courses. So uh-huh. if you haven't done that yet, I honestly have no idea what you're waiting for. Because uh, I'm, I'm waiting to be sold on the quality of the education I might be provided before handing over money. Uh, but also the fact that I'm not attending law school anytime in the near future or probably ever. So. Because there's like hours and hours and hours of material and coursework there that uh-huh. we just restructured our Kickstarter essay plans and you mm. can get all of it mm. for one cost. Okay. $20. I get it. Okay. Cool. okay. Go. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Run. Get the courses. Yeah. You're like, I need more diversity statement help. There's lots for you. Okay. But I was talking to a student this week about diversity statements and I was telling him that I truly believe that if you do this right, your diversity statement can be one of the most beautiful, one of the most powerful pieces of writing in your entire application. Wow. I mean, that's quite the uh, quite the promise. All right. Well, I'm being an English major myself, having written more than a few essays in my time, book reports, uh, short stories, uh, analysis, on and on and on. I am honestly curious to know what a diversity statement is. And if I learn effectively through the course of this video, or at least given enough pointers on it, maybe I'll write one and post it onto Twitter just for fun. But so many people miss the mark. Okay. So some common mistakes, right? Yes. A lot of times people will repeat what's in their personal statement, right? Uh-huh. If you're talking about your culture and immigration please do not also talk about immigration and your diversity statement i've got that right give me something else give me a different puzzle piece i always say your application should be like a puzzle what am i supposed to do with two top right corner pieces nothing right well then what what should my personal statement contain or should i say what should i refrain from putting in my personal statement that i should re- re- you know reserve for my diversity statements you're saying culture and immigration okay so so don't talk about my cultural and or country of origins in my personal statement at that point the second puzzle piece is irrelevant Uh it is also not necessarily about how diversity is important in law schools and that's an interesting Uh one i've seen the last couple of cycles students have taken that to mean like well i'm black and i want to be part of the two percent of black women and this is why diversity is important in the law school world and that's like not what the question's asking oh it's not it's not okay well then what is what is the question that is being asked that the diversity statement is meant to answer it's not at all and it's a missed opportunity as well the question is really asking and there's so many different diversity statement prompts but at at their core what diverse experience have you had that has given you a unique perspective or a different perspective such that that perspective will contribute to a law school classroom but how would that be different than my personal statement i mean truth be told I was not required to submit a personal statement or anything so formal when I attended college. It wasn't quite, yeah, it wasn't wasn't as high prestige or very, you know, select like that. Um, but my understanding of a personal statement is more or less no different than, say, a cover letter for a job application. You know, you explain how you heard about the company and uh, what you think about the industry and what you think you might have to offer and so on and so on and so on. It's usually fairly bland. It's usually very formal and professional, but it gives you an outline of all those things you think you can contribute to the employer, or in this case, what you would contribute to the school or how you would leverage the school giving you the opportunity, that kind of thing. Okay. Why wouldn't you say something like that in your personal statement? Why separate these two things out? Because if it is that important to you to represent, as our speaker said, the 2% of uh, black women in the legal industry or something, why make it two separate statements? Why segregate your thoughts about yourself one to the other. But be very mindful of the fact that you don't actually have to talk about the law. You probably sh- shouldn't. I mean, most diversity statements that I've read that have really moved me don't mention the law at all. Wow. So a diversity statement applying to law school makes no mention of the very discipline and or industry, depending on how you look at it, that you're wanting to join and contribute to. 
Okay. But they do mention a takeaway. They do mention a different way of looking at the world. They do mention a different way of interacting with others that on its face, you can see how valuable that would be to a law school classroom. How? I, I, I need an example. Do, do you have a, a template or something or can you give us your own? I mean, if I have a perspective on the world, but I'm not then tying it to the legal practice or my passion for the law or something to that effect, what exactly is the point of a diversity statement onwards to a college uh, law school admission? I also like to say that diversity statements should be intersectional. Oh, they should be intersectional, you say. Um, do tell. Because those are more interesting. And so oh. we're going to kind of walk through what some of that structure might look like. Okay. So that structure, usually you're going to, you know, if, you, if you're following my brainstorming method, you've, you've done all of your universal brainstorming, you have all your stories. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're going to go and you're going to buy the $20 to get all the courses <laughs> so you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, obviously I have not done my prep work to pay $20 for hours and hours and hours of information on something that I'm never going to do. So I guess I'll just have to wing it and use context clues for whatever is not being mentioned. Or you'll download our free guide so you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, no. But you're, if you followed my methods and you've, you've done this universal brainstorming, you uh -huh. have chosen your stories for your personal statement, woo woo, and now you've looked at your uh, universal brainstorming and you're, you're trying to choose your stories for your diversity statement. Okay, stories for my personal statement. Okay, I'm applying to law school. Okay, so scribe is applying to law school. What? What could I say about my personal statement that is not referencing my culture and or my immigration status? Those are the only two she mentioned so far. Okay. Um, uh, while I was growing up, I was fascinated <clears throat> by law shows. You know, like Law and Order was a big fixture uh, in my life. And my parents liked watching Madlock! And, you know, uh, Murder, She Wrote, and sort of like picking apart crimes and using, uh, you know, both uh, deduction and, and instinct and, you know, process of elimination and all, all that kind of stuff. I was fascinated with crime shows and law shows and, and things. Um, so uh, that, you know, that spurred on my interest in legal questions, even as an amateur. And also, you know... Uh, more or less also helped to influence my uh, love for critical thinking and problem solving and, uh, you know, uh, that kind of thing. And so I took a couple of criminal justice classes in college and I learned some about the realities of things. And then, uh, da, 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 da. I mean, if I'm going to be talking about why I want to go to law school, that's kind of the thing I'd bring up. Now, if my diversity statement is to have nothing to do with the law or doesn't have to have anything to do with the law, um... What would I say about my culture? Um, um, uh, the Constitution, I guess? Following the law? I mean, the fact that you know I'd be interested in the law in the first place is sort of an extension of one's love and or respect and or passion for the very culture made up of our laws in this country, which is what it's, it's the one culture that kind of binds us all together. It's our, you know, patriotic culture, I suppose, for lack of a better phrase. Anyway, sorry, I'm just going off on tangents. What, what, what am I supposed to do? And usually you're going to choose about maybe one to three stories, right? Okay. Uh, because it's only one page, double spaced. Eh, sometimes you can go to a page and a half. I like to shoot for one page, double spaced. I also recommend for cover letters, for resumes and so on, you limit things to one page. You put in only the most recent work experience and or relevant work experience going back no more than 10 years if you have to. Uh, and as far as references are concerned, don't add those e extra. Put uh, put a note at the end of the resume, references available upon request, uh, which also saves paper space, saves the uh, person looking over these things time. And if, you're there, if your resume actually interests them, them contacting you for those references gives you a clue as to where you are in the selection process. So there you go. No smaller than 11 point fonts. Yeah. And you will probably 
start off with a story that kind of names claims your diversity doesn't have to be on socioeconomics race gender culture it could be something completely different i have read fantastic fantastic personal statements about a lot of different things and then no 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 no, no. wait what are we, is the personal statement are we on the, the diversity statement because if the diversity statement's not supposed to mention race class etc what you might have another story that complicates or further shows how that diversity really affected you or made you think that differently diversity. even about that first thing that you claimed right now you uh, we have layers i love a diversity statement that has layers uh -huh. and then you have this kind of takeaway how it has shaped you so uh -huh. i will give you my diversity statement oh excellent okay i was i was getting worried there for a second because as you guys know having watched many of these things along with me Oftentimes we hear things talked about and then we never actually are provided an active example. Okay, what is your diversity statement? Like way back in the day, okay. I started talking about how I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. You grew up in a black Southern Baptist church, okay. Uh, I grew up in a suburb and my parents and family weren't particularly religious. Okay. It's probably not that surprising given the fact that I'm the girl that prays over outside exams, right? Uh, Southern Baptist roots are pretty strong internally, although still figuring out where I'm going denominationally in the future. This is a conversation for another day. But Yeah, it is. Okay. I grew up in a, a very strong Black Southern Baptist church in Maryland, and church was kind of the center of the world. Okay, well religion fine um what does your skin color have to do with it i, I guess that's the other part i'd have to, i'm curious about the diversity statement like do you have to find a way to make your race and or your gender and or your orientation whatever the subject may be do you have to find a way to make that relevant to applying to be a lawyer I mean, if you could tie a story in where that became relevant, like you encountered some kind of legal situation as a result or re involved with it, then maybe? Cool. Name it, claim it. However, uh -huh. towards the end of my high school, my mother ended up um, in a relationship with another woman, uh -huh. and that was really complicated uh -huh. for our family, yeah. for our church, yeah. for what I thought. Uh -huh. I wasn't really sure. I was very uh -huh. confused. Uh -huh. But from that experience, uh -huh. I learned to redefine my own faith. I learned the definition of love and acceptance. I learned to challenge some of the beliefs that I had previously thought. Uh -huh. But most importantly, I learned that the world was not really black and white. Like the world was so many different shades of gray, which you know, that's kind of ironic given the fact that you underscore your skin color in this when it's completely irrelevant to the experience of having a parent uh, start behaving counter to your religious upbringing, which is an experience that many people can share and has absolutely nothing to do with the color of your skin. And why does this not belong on your personal statement? Why is this classified as diverse versus a life experience that belongs on a personal statement. You know, at this point, it might seem like obvious, but the good year of 2010, it's not as obvious to me at age 16. And so I learned from that moment, right, uh -huh. to, to not try to put people in boxes and, and to look for nuance and look for shade gray. <laughs> Not put people in boxes. By the way, let me tell you about my skin color and, a, and the church that I was in and so on and so forth. And in a diversity statement, which is separating out certain ideas or certain fundamental parts of your personal makeup from the other because they belong in their own category, sectionally. Okay. And um, to understand that when we try to make people fit in and confine them the way that society does, we kind of miss out on a lot of beauty. I, I agree. I agree. If you start assessing people on the basis of the lowest common denominator and ignore anything about them as individual people, you are missing out. So again, I'm curious to know why a diversity statement why not just tell your personal story 
why separate these two things? It's a terrible paraphrase. I promise it was written better than that. Uh -huh. But you can kind of see that structure, right? One story. Oh, well, complication, plot twist. What I learned. Yes, this is how we grow. This is how we grow. This is how you show someone that you have adapted to uh, either difficulty or hardship or life change. Uh, if you're explaining to the admissions agent in that personal statement, here is why I love the law. There might be a story of complication or struggle or encountering something that you found to be unfair or something, right? Okay, why does this have to be a diversity story versus your personal statement story? Right, I've had students who have written um, fantastic stories. One of the examples that I love and that's in the course is about a student who is mixed and it starts off with a story about his mom who is Italian. So he's half black, half white and his mom is Italian. It starts off with this beautiful story about making pasta with his mom and then his mom gets sick um, and she ends up dying. And so you're like, oh, that's the diversity. But <laughs> is that? That wasn't my first thought. I'm still waiting for like the, oh, I lost a parent at a young age or something. I don't I don't know the age, but okay. What does, I can't wait for it. I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on, on the edge of my seat here. I paid for the seat, but I'll only need the edge. What does his mixed racial background have to do with this story? But then it's layered on with this story of how he, because he's black presenting, uh-huh. Right. Uh, people have these judgments and preconceived notions about what he can and cannot do. Such as? He realizes in that it's really important not to judge people's identity based on what you see. Because oh, it isn't? Oh, gosh. Well, what, a, what a revelation. Um, why bring it up in applying for law school? What? Okay, well, what does that have? Okay I'm, okay, I'm trying to pick this apart. What does this, his ethnicity or his mixed background have to do with it? What does his, uh, you know, his mother passing away have to do with realizing don't judge a book by its cover? Because you don't know what you might be erasing. When yeah. people only look at him and see that he's black, it feels like it's erasing the memory of his mom. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, I guess I could kind of see that. What does that have to do with him being interested in being a lawyer? I mean, assuming that this is about him applying to be a lawyer or go to law school. I'm getting a lot of mixed messages here. It's like, oh yeah, don't judge people by their appearance. Okay, but really, really emphasize your appearance in this thing called a diversity statement. Why not tell the admissions person, I have a passion for the law and I have experienced prejudice in my life and put that in your personal statement. Why put it in something separate? Like, what? And so he has learned to move through life letting other people define themselves before he defines them in his head. I would be curious to know if our speaker has an example of a white person and their diversity statement. I mean, is this only applied to... Here's the other question. Is this a requirement of law schools that you also include this or is this like a voluntary extra? Maybe I have to pay 20 bucks to find out that piece of information, but... One of the best if not the best diversity statement I have probably ever read. I have read tons of others. Um, I've, I've read a, a really great diversity statement about people who, for whatever reason, don't have a lot of roots to whatever their ethnic culture might be, whether it's language or, or food or whatever. Uh -huh. And then they go and as they become an adult, they, they find it, they seek it out and they learn uh -huh. to reclaim it. And they reclaim it. Okay. Like, I know that my ancestors were uh, Scottish uh, and like my, my mother's side of the family has a bit more of a straight line culturally, uh, ethnically speaking. My father's side of the family is eh, a bit of a mutt, let's say. Uh, but uh, 
you know, being Scottish or Scottish traditions or anything else had absolutely nothing to do with my growing up. I've been interested in finding out about my ancestors, but I would not say that if I, you know, got a kilt. Like my, my mother visited Scotland several years ago, and uh, as a gift, she uh, bought a kilt, which has the, uh, uh, the clans, uh, the Scottish clans hunting tartan as its pattern. At least that's what I was told. And I've worn it a couple of times on special occasions or for Halloween or something. But I'd never say that I'm reclaiming my culture because it's not mine. It's not the one I grew up with. It's just an interesting anecdote to my ancestry. I've never really understood that reclaiming my culture, like it was taken away from me. It was just, it was never a factor in my growing up. It was never really a factor in my mother's growing up. It's just, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's... Talk about a cultural appropriation. <laughs> they learn to redefine it for themselves. Redefine it for themselves. Okay, so I've reclaimed a culture I was never a part of, and I've now decided to adapt it into my own thing. Huh. Huh. I, so yeah, cultural appropriation. That's bad, right? I, I've been told by many, 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 many people that that's a bad thing. So is, is that... I mean, if you are a speaker, rhetorically speaking, if you don't think that's a bad thing, then you and I might be on the same page. You know? I mean, ha owning a kilt, even though I'm not a practicing Scot, <laughs> I don't think I should be looked down on for that, you know? But then I don't make anything more of it than it is. So I don't know. I have read great diversity statements about being a non-traditional student, about the journey to reclaim education, right? What? To go back to school later in life. Um, uh -huh. Maybe starts off with a story about um, what that person's life was originally, and then what pushed them to go back to school and a story about what that non-traditional schooling looked like, but also what they've learned about themselves and others. Again, why does this need to be in a separate category of statement? Why can't that be part of your personal statement? I'm still not getting why the division. I read a beautiful, 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 beautiful essay about um, a student who, you know, her parents were immigrants, they had worked really hard, and she didn't get into college. And so she went to community college, but she had felt like a failure because she had been working really hard to get into college and the community college route was not what was expected. But when she was in community college and she was around all these different people, uh, non-traditional students, students with all kinds of backgrounds, what is a non-traditional student? I mean, I, I think I've heard the term before, and I, I might even have heard the definition before, but what, what constitutes a non-traditional student? If, if you show up in school and you're doing the classes, you're a student. Uh, I mean, I, I guess if you see someone who's like elderly showing up and going into college for the first time, maybe that's non-traditional because they're making up for lost time or something, but... She had a different, changed perspective, a, a, an understanding of the value of education, the value of the journey, and the different perspectives that go into that, and redefining failure and success for herself, and so ultimately, you know, she transferred to a four-year school, but how she took those lessons with her. I can what does any of that have to do with the origin of her parents? What does any of that have to do with her race slash ethnicity? Why does why does that have anything to do with anything? You can go on and on and on and on. People's yeah. diversity statements do tend to stick with me a little bit more than their personal statements because they're so, so powerful and so beautiful if you let them be. I, I, I'm just going to be a broken record asking the same question. As I said, you're doing your universal brainstorming. Your personal statement should be more tied into your why law focus statement or focus thesis, right? The reason for going to law school, the area of law, or the people that you want to impact. You mean the actual relevant information to the thing that I'm attempting to achieve? So is the diversity statement like meant to be, here's where you put your sob story? Or, or here's where you put your this is where my feelings come from or something. I, I'm not quite sure what the relevance of the diversity statement is towards the goal. What, what is this, what is this telling the admissions officer about you that the personal statement does not? How, how does this, or, or what is this meant to do to convince the college to bring you on versus someone else? 
Like, what, what exactly is, is the ultimate purpose of it? The stories that led you there, the development of that passion. But there may be other things that are so important to you. Just one more, there was a, a student who wrote a diversity statement about this portrait that she had painted of her grandfather at, in his final days. And the power of that relationship and that bond and how it changed her. I mean, like I said, I could go on and on and on there. I'm sure you could, but I, I'd still be <clears throat> really curious to hear an actual argument for the utility of a diversity statement as opposed to a personal statement, which sounds like is much more on point for the purposes of admissions. There are so many beautiful stories. It doesn't have to be this really big overarching manifesto about the need for diversity in law schools. It should be really personal to you. It should be an essay that nobody else can write. It is yep. your story fully, deeply, and it should have shaped how you view things because that's ultimately the question, right? How has a diverse experience that you've had a diverse experience. What are you talking? The death of a family member, uh, not being able to afford college, meeting different people. What does any of that have to do with inherently race, gender, uh, ethnicity, etc.? What does any of that have to do with the law? I, I mean, and boy, my pause game is just on point today, isn't it? A different path, a cultural experience, a different kind of upbringing. How has something different shaped you? Why can't I put that in my personal statement? I mean, e w whether it involves my race, gender, culture, orientation, or whatever, or not, why can that not go into the personal statement? If it's not relevant to my love, passion, or interest in the law, what is the point of a diversity statement? Made you who you are, transformed your thinking, changed how you interact with people such that when you get into this new community, other people will be changed from interacting with you. What? What? I mean, setting aside the fact that sounds a little pompous, but Okay. You will benefit the community by being there with your with your experiences and your perspectives. You mean benefit the law student community by being passionate about the law? I mean, isn't if the law is meant to be, and I say meant to be because I know there's no perfect system, but if the law is meant to be the great equalizer, if justice as has been rendered in statuary for years, is to be blind, what does diversity have to do with it? And the reason why I usually always say that most people can write a fantastic diversity statement is because we are all different. Are we? Are we? Well, why didn't you include any, why didn't you, why did you include specific demographics of people as this applies to and not say everyone? Because I mean, you made it the issue I have to ask. What does a plain, otherwise uninteresting, right, because of history or otherwise, white person do with their diversity statement? Are they required to submit one? What would it look like if they did? That's what I'd be curious to find out. We have all gone through so many unique things. You kind uh -huh. of don't get to 21 or 65 or however old you are without going through something kind of unique. Kind of Except there's nothing unique. There's nothing unique. Everybody has gone through different things, certainly, with different names, different time periods. There are no new stories. If you're trying to relate yourself to the admission, you're trying to show that you have an understanding about human nature and you're not special because you had a parent die. That certainly, it shaped your perspective on things and it changed your life and so on. But that just makes you more human, more empathetic to the struggles of other people who have gone through similar things. It doesn't make you special. It makes you human. You know, and under the law, 
ideally, we're all treated equally. Again, I say ideally. And that's, that's, the, that's the goal, right? That's what you're supposed to be striving for if you want to become a lawyer, if you love the law, if you love the, the utility and the meaning of the law. I don't know. Kind of you that has maybe really shaped how you view the world. Uh -huh. That is maybe different from the thing that has brought you to law school. Well, then what is, <laughs> why is it relevant then? And this is an opportunity for you to tell that story, for them to get to know you on a deeper, more personal level. Is, is, that, is that what I want to have happen in law school, to be known on a personal level? Or do I want to be treated like a professional adult, lawyer, etc.? What is the utility of the diversity statement? Is it a requirement? Is it voluntary? If I don't have one, do I have a less, a less likely chance of getting into law school? It can be such a beautiful addition to your law school applications, <sighs> if done right. And uh -huh. it can really help with that human connection. I always say it's about impact, right? We want to make impact with admissions. It's not about standing out. Just... <laughs> it's not about standing out. You just said everybody's got a unique story. That's uniquely you. It's not about standing. Of course, it's about standing out. If there's a selection process, if they only let in certain a certain number of students per year cycle or whatever, of course, it's about standing out. What is the personal statement for? What is the beautiful story of a diversity statement for? What? It's about making impact. It's what? about connecting with people here in their what? heart. You, you mean standing out? I remember. I have read hundreds, 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 hundreds of essays at this point. Have you read hundreds? And I still remember some of these really poignant stories. Sure, because there are some really good stories out there. I was just, uh, I was just thinking today on, on I've, I've talked about this before, on Twitter. There's this uh, sort of mild debate happening on a couple of threads I'm seeing just because, you know, Twitter knows my algorithm at this point, uh, talking about how the Netflix version of The Punisher is the best rendition of The Punisher on screen ever. And I'm like, no, no. And, and I'll tell you why. And of course, in my mind, I'm thinking back like the best Punisher stories I ever read. Right. And, and they're stuck in my mind. They've been stuck in my mind for decades because they were so good. And they, they struck a tone with me. Punisher number 45. Uh, uh, one way fair. Apparently Chuck Dixon's first outing at writing a Punisher story and he knocked it out of the park. Then you've got uh, the, the Punisher comic book series that nobody ever really talks about, but really should. It's called Punisher Armory. It was a 10 issue series. And all it was was these still life <clears throat> renderings of weapons and equipment and all these things that the Punisher conceivably would be using in his work. And all it is is these still life pieces of art and little narration boxes of the Punisher talking about what this is, how he uses it, what its utility is in his work and so on, which reveals more about the character than any issue of the Punisher where actions taking place than I can recall. These things stick with me. Yeah, great. Well, if I'm having a conversation about the Punisher, that's great. If I'm trying to get into law school, who cares? Because when I read that, it touched me here. Oh. That's what I want for you as you're oh. beginning your diversity statement journey. And hopefully that doesn't feel too overwhelming. I promise you, you all have a beautiful story inside of you. Oh, it I, I know I have a beautiful story. I have many beautiful stories. Many, many, many beautiful stories. If only I could figure out how to put them down on paper. Because I only went to college for four years and got an English degree, and I still don't know how to do that. <laughs> and I cannot wait, cannot wait to read them. Uh-huh. So I will leave you there with hopefully those diversity statement nuggets. I will, however, tell you a little bit about our Kickstart essay plans, our new ones. If Okay, I, I don't need the sales pitch. I, I, I got it at the beginning. I, I don't care now. Okay, so a diversity statement is, here is something that occurred in my life that was either life-changing, perspective-changing, etc. And even if it has absolutely nothing to do with the mechanics of the experience, mention my skin color, mention my gender, mention my culture, whether it's actually the one I practice or the one that I can adopt from my, you know, heredity. Uh, 
and just sort of throw that in there. Because the guy whose mother died, you know, uh, he was half black and half Italian, and then his mother died. But then people, like, make assumptions about him because of his skin color, and that's unfair. Like, what do the, either of these things have to do with one another? What What does his mother dying have to do with... D doesn't respect his mother? Well, just because somebody looks at him and doesn't know he's half Italian? Like, wh what, what assumptions were made of him? If they knew he was Italian, what assumptions would we made of him then? Would that be dis disrespecting his father? Like, wh what? I don't know. That There you go. <laughs> That's the video. I'm not going to listen to any more uh, sales pitch because I, I don't have any interest in paying 20 bucks for lessons on something I still don't understand the utility of. Um, I, I'd love to have it explained to me, like, you know, do, do colleges now require diversity statements? Um... Is there an advantage to including one or or not including one, depending? I don't know. Well, I'll go to the uh, comments here, see what you guys have to say. Um, uh, J.A., I called the child abuse hotline, but the child just swore and cursed at me and then hung up. I, I don't know what you expected. You know, I... I, I don't know what you expected. Uh, some emulation. Show me where the diversity statement touched. <laughs> it really touched me. It really touched me. Uh, Mr. Tickle Trunk. This is what people do with trauma. Everything must be about my pain. I guess. I mean, it's it's not untrue that some of the events in our lives which have the greatest impact on our perspectives or on our personalities or whatever are often ones that are not fun, right? It's, it's not usually the case that something good happens and suddenly your perspective is changed, because usually it's very affirming. Oftentimes it's something that goes counter to your well-being or your perspective on the world or something, something that's, you know, either conflicting or traumatic. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, let's dwell on the pain, my personal pain. I mean, you know, not to be too callous about it, but it sounded like every diversity statement had to be a story of hardship and thus a sob story you know I mean it may be it may be entirely true it may be entirely true but if you're going to start leveraging that story of hardship to try to convince somebody that you should be put into a specific category as in law student it starts to become a sob story I mean, if you can take something that actually happened to you and leverage it into an argument for it, this is what got me interested in the law. You know, like, uh, okay, what's the what's, uh, story of... Tra so, uh, you know, uh, I, I read a story not too long ago about a lady whose sister was murdered. And while the guy, uh, the guy was eventually caught, uh, he was allowed to go through a plea deal process that ended up with him getting a far lighter sentence than perhaps he should have, all things considered. And so this inspired this uh, lady's younger sister, who witnessed this, to become uh, a lawyer because she wanted to, you know, uh, work to change the law, but also to make sure criminals got what she thought and the law allowed they deserved. And so I think she became a prosecutor or was attempting to become one. That kind of story completely relevant to a personal statement into why I want to become a lawyer and does not require any kind of cultural element to explain that because it is a very human, relatable experience sans any aesthetics, you know? So I, I, that kind of story I could see working because it explains something. It's, it's backing up your passion for the subject you're presumably trying to get into school to learn about and become, uh, and gain some kind of mastery in. What is the purpose of the diversity statement towards that end except to garner sympathy? That's, that's all I'm seeing it here from the examples provided by our speaker. And that's what confuses me. I mean, I suppose schools these days, that was, that's what they look for. But uh, Scrappy, it's an advanced degree. They're adults. Uh, J.A., it's up to the student to learn the material. Oh, are you talking to somebody else? Oh, sorry, okay. Um, here, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. Oh, you guys are having a conversation. I apologize. 
Uh, okay, uh, in all seriousness, it is important for an educator to know their pupil's psychological interests, sensibilities, natural proclivities, so they know where their curiosity naturally leans itself. Sure, but shouldn't all of that be in reference to the discipline, especially in a specialized school that's teaching the law? Like, these are the reasons why the law interests me. Not, I had my mother die, and it sucked. Like, what? Okay. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm wondering is like, what, what, is, what is the relevance of any of this towards the goal being sought? Right? That's more or less what I'm looking for. Um, oh, Kiradan gives me a link to what is a non traditional student? Okay, what is a non traditional student? Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll just read it off rather than sharing the thing. A non-traditional student is a term originating in North America, surprise, surprise, that refers to a category of students at colleges and universities. Okay. The National Center for Education Statistics, NCES, notes that there are varying definitions of non-traditional student. I'm not surprised. Non-traditional students are contrasted with traditional students who, quote, earn a high school diploma, enroll full-time immediately after finishing high school, depend on parents for financial support, and either do not work during the school year or work part-time, unquote. Okay, so elements that might make someone a non-traditional student. Uh, delays enrollment, i.e. does not enter post-secondary education in the same calendar year that high school ended, okay. Uh, attends part-time for at least part of the academic year, works full-time while enrolled, is considered financially independent for purposes of determining eligibility for financial aid, has dependents other than a spouse, usually children, uh, but may also be caregivers of sick or elderly family members, and does not have a high school diploma, uh, i.e. completed a GED or some other completion certificate. Okay. Okay, so a traditional student is just, I go to high school, I graduate high school, I move on to college, and I'm still living at home. More or less, right? Sort of the natural, sort of uh, uh, stereotypical progression of your educational career. Okay, and anything that falls outside of that, non-traditional. Okay. What does that have to do with a diversity statement? I don't know. But there you go. Thank you, Keeper Dan. Uh... Drew Barrymore and her violent toxic happiness. What? Meh? What? Who? How dare she frolic in the rain? It crosses boundaries that were set. What? Are we on 51st dates? What's going on? I don't know anymore. This is more the you show now. Uh, J2022. So I was a non traditional student. Well, apparently so, since the definition is so loose and the boundaries are so stringent anything that falls outside of that yeah because let's see i i guess i was a traditional student in that way yes because i graduated high school and it was just sort of anticipated i would then move on to college went to community college for a couple of years because it was cheaper and my parents also had um, uh, my dad's work provided a um, uh, a, a partial not a full, but a partial reimbursement for some educational uh, costs. So I did two years at a community college, then moved on to a four-year, uh, and then did that and just focused on getting my diploma. And ta-da! English major. Yay! Uh, Scribelite, did you see that video of her frolicking in the rain and some black lady claiming it racist? Uh, who? Drew Barrymore? No, I, I, did, not, I did not see that frolicking in the rain is now racist i'm not surprised and sarah chapman i've totally missed the bus well if you wait a little while presumably another one will come along that's that's what i keep telling myself the bus is still coming if i if i leave now if i try to find an alternate way i'm just gonna miss the bus it's coming soon uh, actually, the most non-traditional student story I ever came across was during the Lords of the Night, where I wrote a student in, I believe it was, I'm going to say Harvard, might have been Princeton. Anyway, it was one of the Ivy League colleges. Do you, do you actually know where the Ivy of the Ivy League comes from? Most people think it's like, has something to do with the plant, like Ivy, the plant. It actually has to do with the number of prestigious colleges there were at the time. There was 
uh, four. And the Roman, R Roman, the Roman numeral of four is IV. So the big four colleges. It was like uh, Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, and whatever the fourth one is that I can't remember all of a sudden. Something like that, yeah, I think. I'm probably wrong about the Stanford thing, but who knows? I hate Stanford anyway. So there you go, that's where IV came from. Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? I was saying something about something and then I just suddenly forgot when I got to the IV thing. I I don't remember now. Oh well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the the uh the guy the guy who uh passed or gave his final uh dissertation or whatever for one of the big schools, Harvard, Princeton, whatever. Uh <laughs> he made a rap. And that was accepted as a winning passing final dissertation. I made a joke about it on Lords of the Night. I found it ridiculous, but there you go. And I don't believe he was actually even pursuing a arts degree or something that would seem relevant to that. It was just a it was just a rap. And they just showered him with a diploma for that. So there you go. Yale, that's what it was. Thank you, some emulation. Yale. Yes. Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and Stanford, I think. Yeah, the IV. There you go. There's a little piece of trivia for you, if you ever wanted one. Anyway, I didn't have anything else, guys. I kind of threw this together more or less at the last minute last night because I got late word about the whole true crime thing. I am looking forward, again, to uh, trying out uh, that show when I can. I'm, I'm in contact with uh, the same guests that I had uh, contacted previously and a couple of others to maybe see if things would work out otherwise, uh, but we'll see. I'll let you guys know as soon as I can nail down a new date. Um, next weekend, I should be doing a Sunday stream. I'm visiting the family on Saturday. I should be back Sunday. And uh, as usual, this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, you can find me here for TED Excellence. Well, once again, I'll go over a off-brand TED Talk for education and information. I call it Edumification. Oh, and by the way, uh, in case you missed it, because it's entirely possible you did, uh, over on Sinatra Says's channel, Sinatra Screams, the most recent edition of the AAA stream was just me and Sinatra. Uh, Polly Dub was out of town and Drunkle was under the weather, and so me and Sinatra just did a talk show for two and a half hours. It was very... Uh, Eh, semi-reminiscent of a Lords of the Night kind of thing. So if you need a little bit of Sinatra and Scribe in your life, go check out the Sinatra Screams channel and the most recent edition of the AAA stream. And I, I think I think the title of it is That'll Do, or That'll Do It, or something like that. So go check that out. It was fun. I had a good time. We talked about TV shows and movies and the news and crazy stuff. So there you go. Anyway, my ramble is over. This Sunday stream is done. Thank you all for joining me. Moderators, thank you for keeping an eye on things. Even though everyone here is so well behaved, you have very little to do. Everybody who donated either to myself or to the GoFundMes posted at the top of the chat box, thank you so much for your generosity. We all really appreciate it. I hope you learned something. I, I'm i more curious now. I might uh, do some more research on diversity statements. Maybe find something more explanatory for the future and make up my own. But until then, everyone, I hope you have a good rest of your Sunday. I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. I hope you have a good week ahead of you. I hope you're all safe and well. If you are not well, please get well soon, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.